from Dr. Jack Gilbert, and this is going to sting a little. In the United States, around 1 in 25 patients are likely to suffer a healthcare associated infection during a hospital stay. In 2011, there were 722,000 such infections, of which approximately 158,000 could be attributed to a surgical procedure. Infection is always a potential risk following surgery, especially gastrointestinal surgery. When the surgeon cuts open the gut, they unwittingly affect the bacteria in multiple ways. The first way is the sudden introduction of oxygen from the outside air, which is highly toxic to many types of bacteria. Secondly, patients receive antibiotics with every major surgery, which indiscriminately kills the good bacteria along with the bad. The third effect is that the healing process causes a depletion of nutrients in the gut. This happens when the body starts to repair itself by sucking nutrients out of the environment and into the gut wall, reducing the bacteria's food supply. As a result of these and other stresses during and after surgery, the core microbiome begins to weaken. No longer held in check by the surrounding good bacteria, harmful bacteria can invade healing tissues, releasing toxic enzymes that start to break down the tissue at the surgical connection. This turns a healthy microbiome into a harmful one that can lead to life-threatening infections and sepsis. We've been tackling the problem of surgical infections for many years, and the good news is we're winning. We've seen a 19% reduction in surgical infections for 10 different surgical procedures between 2008 and 2013. But we need to do better, a lot better. Researchers at the University of Chicago and Argonne National Laboratory are working hard to develop new therapies that could be used to prevent surgical infections. Dr. John Alberti has been leading the fight to develop new strategies that prevent the development of pathobiomes. Two of these approaches have proved to be highly effective in animal models. One strategy is what's called fecal transplants. Hold on, that's not quite how it sounds. All right, it's exactly how it sounds. But bear with me for a moment. If we can manipulate the environment to create a microbiome where these collagen degrading bacteria either don't have the drive to degrade collagen or are not present, then perhaps we create an environment where we won't develop anastomotic leaks. So we've used two approaches. One is to study how enhancing the microbiome with a fecal transplant might preserve that healing function after surgery. And the second is to embed key nutrients in the gut and perhaps even on the skin that will allow our normal microbiome to thrive even in the presence of antibiotics that we must use. Now I know that sounds counterintuitive, but we now have the sequencing power with Argonne National Laboratories and we have the synthesis power with the Institute of Molecular Engineering at Argonne and at UC to actually understand at a extremely granular and high resolution level what nutrients do the bad guys want, what nutrients do the good guys want, and how to create a recipe that will make the body behave uh, the way we want it to after surgery. By being mindful of the role that our microbiome plays in our overall health, we can develop creative ways to protect it, to prevent infections, and even to accelerate recovery. And then perhaps one day, the number won't be 158,000. It'll be zero.